Integers are a staple in programming, and Elixir has its own unique twists when it comes to handling them. We'll break this down with some practical examples in the Elixir shell. So let's jump right in and let's open up our terminal. Command space terminal. You've opened up the Elixir shell from a project before, but now how do we use it without a project? Let me make this bigger as well. Okay. So without a project, it's even easier. All we have to do from the command line is hit IEX. And there you go. Now we have interactive Elixir shell running. So integers are just like the whole numbers that you count with, but they can also go negative. So just try typing, you know, 42 or negative three. Simple as that. These are your everyday integers. Elixir lets you express integers in different bases. So let's play around with that. Um, for decimal or, you know, base 10, just, you know, one, two, three, four, that is the way that we normally see numbers, right? And then we can also use binary. So we can do zero B and that's how you know it's binary. And then one zero, one zero. And now binary is base two. So you only can have two values at a time. So it's either zero or one. And this is a uh, 10. And I'll put some stuff up on the screen, but essentially zero, the first zero here is a value of one. And then you double one to two. So this one being on. So now we have the value of two. And then we have four here. And then the value of eight. So we have eight plus two equals 10. So there you go. We'll go into binary in greater detail in a another types video. And then we also have the use of octal and the, Octal is zero O and then the, the value of seven five five and that equals 493. Yep. That's the stuff that you see in Unix file permissions. And how do we get to 493 from that? Well, it's base eight. So we have to do things like this. So we have to do, um, seven times seven times eight squared. So the first value here, so five is eight to the zero power and then eight to the one power and then eight to the second power. So eight um, squared. And so that's 64. So seven times 64 plus five times eight because eight to the one is eight. And then um, plus, I'm not going to have it spaced just for easier readability. And then eight to the zero is one. So then we have five times one and that equals 493. So that's how you would do octal. And then lastly, we have hexadecimal. So hexadecimal would look like 8x, 1, 8, 8a, a, not 8, 3F. And this is a popular format for like color codes and memory addresses. And now hexadecimal is base 16. So we do this all the same way. Basically, since this is the fourth value here, this is 16 to the third, um, 16 to the second, 16 to the first, and then 16 to the zero. And so if we go across that, that would be one times 4,096 plus 10 times um, 256 plus um, three times 16 plus 15 times one. And so, with hexadecimal, you have values one through nine, which are face value. And then you have A through F and A is 10 and F is 15 and everything in between is, you know, 11, 12, 13, and 14. 
And so that's where I got the 10 from and the 15 from because F is 15. And so that's where we get 6719. That's how hexadecimal works. Hi, I'm Jacob. I help companies build scalable fault tolerance systems in Elixir. With over a decade of experience, I specialize in solving complex technical challenges, whether that's architecting new systems, implementing real-time processing, or scaling existing applications. I work with teams worldwide to deliver high-performance solutions that deliver results. Results. If you need help with your next Elixir project, visit elixirmentor.com to schedule a call. One of the cool things about Elixir is that it doesn't limit the size of integers. So we can do crazy big numbers. We could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then we could do that times um, nine, eight, seven, six, five five, four, three, two, one, zero, and hit enter. So that's a big number, right? And Elixir handles them smoothly. There's no problem. Now, as far as like arithmetic operators go, Elixir keeps it classic. So let's test that out. We have our simple addition. You can just do five plus um, three, pretty basic, right? And you can do subtraction the same way, 10 minus seven, all right? Don't need to explain that much. And then you have multiplication, which is four times six, 24. So multiplying numbers. And then you have division. So 10 divided by three. And see what you get. We ended up getting a float back, not an integer. We're going to learn more about floats in the following video, but it's important to know this. If we want to keep it an integer, we have to use a function that's provided to us called div div, and you do 10 comma three. And then this will only give us a whole number of three. So it cuts off the end, right? And so if you want the remainder, we have to use a function called rem, and that's 10 comma three, and that will return one back. And because three can only go into 10 three times, so three times three equals nine, um, 10 minus nine equals one, so the remainder is one. So Elixir is pretty smart with numbers. It manages integers to avoid overflow or underflow issues. So for example, we can do like crazy things like this. We can do like two times um, math, colon math dot pow. And don't worry what I'm writing right now. Just know that this is um, taking 10 to the power of 300, which is a really big number. And it calculates it easy. So there'd be like 300 zeros there. And Elixir handles it like it's nothing. So we've seen how Elixir can represent numbers in different bases, right? These are super useful for different scenarios. Um, like binary for bit level logic, octal in file systems, or hexadecimal for graphics and computing. So time to compare some numbers. The cool thing here is you can compare integers and floats directly. So you can do um, five less than 10.0. And yes, five is less than 10. It gives us a true back. And we can do seven is greater than 4.5. That gives us a true back too. Now Elixir categorizes integers as small or big. And this is basically just depending on their size. This mainly affects how the beam, the Elixir, uh, the Elixir virtual machine processes them. So particularly in terms of performance. So now keep in mind the larger the integers, the more memory they chew up. This is especially crucial in scenarios where performance is key. So even though Elixir is pretty efficient with handling big numbers, you wanna keep that in mind. Now, integers are everywhere. They're used for loop counters, uh, data processing, you name it. In Elixir, thanks to their flexible handling, they become even more powerful tools in your coding arsenal. So converting integers to other types in Elixir is a breeze too. So for instance, we can do something, we can do uh, integer, integer to dot two underscore string, and we can put in a number and it will return it in a string for us. 
which is handy for all sorts of applications. And there you have it. That's a quick tour through integers in Elixir. We have seen how versatile and powerful they can be. There you have it, our quick little tour through integers in Elixir. We've seen how versatile and powerful they can be. Let's keep experimenting with these concepts and just play around in the Elixir shell. And I will see you in the next video.